السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. My khutbah tonight is called Our Freedom is Our Honor. Welcome to the Ibn Rushd Kutumashi tonight. It begins quite personally, but does not remain so. I'm also a woman. So I'd like to start with my everyday female experience. And I'm also a woman, I'm saying because we're having this um, khutbah, or we're holding this khutbah in remembrance of Hatun Suriju, who was murdered uh, quite some years ago um, in a so-called honor killing, um, which has nothing honorable to it. But this day is, in a way, set in her name. And so I'm starting my khutbah with I'm also a woman. And I'd like to start with my everyday female experience. I was in a relationship for years. Day in, day out, later by the hour, I felt my partner's extremely warm love alternating with his, his equally extreme withdrawal from the relationship. He punished me with disregard, only to love me like no other. Our emotional closeness was indescribable, and being together made me forget everything. Then again, the retreat, the abandonment, a behavior that indicated a psychological disorder, which it took me a long time to understand and even longer to leave behind. It took me many attempts to finally leave. One day, my morning was set in an impenetrable darkness and my body was aching. But suddenly something changed. It occurred to me that no one in the world had the right to do this to me. I suddenly remembered my responsibility for myself more than ever and took courage. During a nightly walk, under the clear starry sky of a cold night in January, I decided to say goodbye to the man I loved. That night, I had a dream. Not just any kind of dream, but a dream that translates the knowledge of our subconscious into images that we can understand. A dream that arises from the fact that Allah, the All, dwells in us and is part of us and we live in Allah and are part of Allah, as parts of a common being, as parts of everything, we have a knowledge that lies deep within us. So in my dream, I stood in front of my birdcage, the door of which suddenly opened all by itself. All three of my budgies flew out, the two yellow-green females and the big blue male. In their new freedom, they flew way up high into the living room. I felt the draft caused by the whirring of their wings, and when I held my finger up like a twig, they landed on it, and in the dream, I felt their little claws as they held on to my finger. The thick blue rooster flew also. Finally, he came to me and sat in my open hand. But now, he was no longer the clean bird that he had flown out as. Rather, he was now covered in dust beyond recognition. In fact, he had lost all substance and was no more than dust altogether. I looked at the cloud of dust for a long time. Then I started to wash it and dry it. But what a surprise. It was no longer my big blue budgie. It was now a beautiful, shiny, quite large bird with bright blue wings that sat very still and allowed me to observe him. I took my time, not knowing whether it was my budgie that had changed when I, had wa when I washed it, or whether it was a completely different new bird. Had I misjudged the bird all along? When I woke up from this dream, I chuckled. I wondered what kind of bird fate would send me now and looked forward to it. But just as important as the identity of the budgie in my dream, was that all of this could only happen because the cage had opened. 
Only then could the soul, represented by the image of the birds, fly freely, and only then could it regain its lost self-determination. In its freedom, the soul could spread its little wings and lift itself up in the air. The previously trapped soul that could only grieve and look liturgically out into the world, now looked responsibly into the world. Her freedom honored her. The outstanding feeling of the dream was not one of cheerfulness and not one of achievement, but was the feeling of the legitimacy of free existence. The feeling of heartfelt joy for being able to do what you were created for, to fly, to buzz, to land, to cling to security here and there, and then to take off again into the unknown. Freedom is a birthright that one can confidently rely on as a Muslim. Without this human freedom, all talk of heaven and hell, of the day of judgment, of reward and punishment, of you would have and you could have and you should have done this or that, is obsolete. Only those who are free to do bad things can be rewarded if they decide not to do them. Only those who are free to do good can be rewarded for choosing to do so. This reward is available to each and every one of us for our own actions. Nobody can be rewarded for another or punished for another. Human dignity is also a birthright. Even prisoners are given a blanket to pr protect them from the cold of the night. Where dignity is violated, there is an outcry in the hearts of many, though not always heard, where the interests of powerful people trample on the dignity of the powerless. Dignity and freedom are birthrights. It is a loving God who endows his creatures with the right to dignity and freedom. Honor, on the other hand, is a social construct that is present in every society, but is filled with different content. In some society, people are honored when they do good to humankind. In others, they are honored when they increase their wealth. The concept of honor is very different from that of freedom and of dignity, much more complicated and even more dangerous. Hatun Suriju grew up in two versions of honor that have nothing to do with each other. Our concept of honor here has very little or nothing in common with the traditional Kurdish concept of family honor that some people still follow. And not all, of course. I love other cultures. I love learning from them. But there are moments when such admiration of the other is not appropriate. In this very special tradition of honor, a girl can be bur buried alive by her own father, shot by her brother, imprisoned by her sisters, under the control of her mother's mother, who refuses to grant final protection. Not at the time of the Prophet, not at the time of the Prophet Muhammad, but today we witness such unimaginable atrocities and the horror that comes with them. Sand was found in a girl's lungs. Who does this and calls it honorable? Positioning honor over personal freedom sacrifices people, even if it does not kill them physically. Being stuck in a loveless marriage is also a form of death. Where joyful experiences are forbidden, our hearts turn into stones. Forbidding love, love and laughing puts us into a dreadful dungeon. That is why we take care of each other, look at each other, listen to each other, and listen attentively. Our freedom is our honor. We alone are the decision makers about ourselves. And especially honorable is the one who gives alms, the one who prays and fasts as he or she can, and who does not judge others, but shows them love and mercy. Our freedom is our honor, undisguised and honest, happily confronting the world, because whoever is sad spreads sadness, but whoever is happy spreads happiness. Imprisonment comes from those who are themselves imprisoned. 
and those who are free spread freedom. The wings of the blackbird, symbols of his freedom, could only shine when his cage was opened. And so will we, as humans, shine when we are free to be agents of our own lives.